Welcome back, Flyers Nitty Gritty fans, to Getting Gritty With It with your host, Jareev Wallach, and a returning guest to my channel, but a new guest to this specific podcast, friend of the show, somebody I definitely admire, Derek Settlemeyer of Nasty Knuckles and Settlemeyer Skate Sharpening. Um, Derek, welcome, man. What's up, man? Thank you so much for having me, brother. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Really excited to have you on, actually. And I was just t- saying before we started recording, like, you know, I had you on talking like general flyers. I wanted recent stuff, you know, obviously you have your own show, but I um, want to get your thoughts on the team in general, especially yeah, yeah. now, you know, that you have a different perspective and you get to meet with pretty much every flyer under the sun. You know, <laughs> uh, I think you have some good insight. Um, so let's, let's start with the Caps game. Um, Philadelphia Flyers come off pretty big win, a 2-1 win over the Washington Capitals. I would actually say maybe even their best game played overall, just from a perspective of playing tight defense. You know, they never really looked rattled. Uh, Jones played really well in net. Uh, just a lot of really good things going on there. Um, and obviously, you know, a big victory for the team, a big goal by a uh, newcomer, um, uh, wow, Derek Broussard, uh, that was a huge goal for him, a guy who I wouldn't say was struggling, but was not on the score sheet as recently as he was in the beginning of the season. What did you think about that game? What did you think about the Flyers taking to the caps after, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say it was a brutal loss by any stretch, you know, but a game that they probably should have had against the Penguins. Yeah, I agree with you. The um, That Washington game, uh, being in hockey for so long, that was a game where we would, we would say, let's play a really good road game. And that's what they did. They were very, very structured. They worked their asses off, too. Let's not get that. And you brought up Derek Broussard's goal. That whole scramble, uh, you know, kept it in at the blue line. That it, You know, he had worked down low. The whole line was working. The puck comes up, knock it off a stick, comes to him, and he snipes. You know, like, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, that was a – that was a – great road game that's that's what coaches always say even the guys say you know like it it might be greasy it might be ugly at the end of the day you want the two points on the road and it's a good team you're playing and you know you could hang your heads after losing a game in pit you probably want to win but at the same time like you said i wouldn't say it's a terrible loss you're you're down 2-1 you find a way to tie you get that one point those points are huge at the end of the year and agree it is as much as people want to say, well, they lost. Well, yeah, they lost and they don't want to lose, but um, they got the point and you turn around, you come home with three out of four points and, and most teams are going to tell you they'll take that, you know, and it's not, you know, penguins are, they're hurt. They've got some injuries right now, but still they're, they're not going to lay down. There's not an easy game in the NHL anymore. I like agree. there, there used to be maybe a couple here and there where you're like, you better win this game, right? You need to win this game. You need to win every game, but like you kind of go in, go on, we're going to win this game, but not anymore. But like you said, great road game. They played the right way the whole time. Jones looked magnificent in that. He's looked good all year, I think. Yep. Uh, I think both goalies are playing well, and that's what you need. That's that's huge uh, for Agreed. a team when, when your goalies um, are both, you know, it, it, Jones has settled right in. I mean, he's only played three. I know it's only three games, but he's three and oh, man. You know, it could be oh and three, it could be one and two. Um, but he looked really sharp in the, in the game against the Caps. Yeah, he looks like a, a difficult man to solve. And I love what you said about it being a road win. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't really understand that about hockey, that there's a different way to play when you're at home in a way. Like you're not as focused on being entertaining, I think, is part of it. But, you know, it's funny you say that. I tend to actually like the road game more than the home game. I guess because I'm not a perfectionist at all. But, like, anytime I see my team giving up a lot of goals, right, giving up a lot of opportunities, not keeping it simple, and getting themselves in trouble, I feel like that's kind of what's eliminated in some of those road games. You know, as somebody who's been really close to the NHL, or has been at the NHL level and been really close to these teams, you know, what do you think about it that they have that mindset that they go into that they can kind of simplify things and, you know, approach the game differently. Like what, why is that? Why can't they take that road game mentality to a home game? Is it, am I right about it just being an entertainment factor? Is it just more nerves or game plan? I think, first of all, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I don't, I don't think a lot of people think of the games that way. They just see it as a game. Yeah. Part of it, I believe is when you're at home, you got the crowd behind you. Yep. 
you know, you're right. You want to do, you want to do things that maybe, you know, Oh, I see this pass, you know, you, you maybe force a play. You shouldn't. Yep. Um, but when you're on the road, you know, it's always put in your head by the coaches. I mean, as long as I was there, uh, it didn't matter what coach it is, you know, Hey, let's play a simple game, you know, protect home base, make the smart plays, get the line, get it in. Yeah. It's a boring game sometimes, but it also frustrates the other team. Then you get their crowd booing and they're trying to do things they can't do. They shouldn't do. And they make the mental mistakes, but more than anything, I think it's just, you know, like there's been times when, when I remember being with uh, the flyers and, you know, you, you lose a couple at home and it, guys are like, this is just good to get on the road. Like it's a different, it's a different mentality uh, the way you're going into the game. And then, Hey, they, and there's sometimes you get on the road and, and you don't have the right mentality and you're yep. not playing simple and it shows, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the game. But uh, I think the biggest thing is, is just, it's always, it's always said in the morning skate, you know, before the game, like let's boys, let's play, let's, you go basically in five minute segments. A lot of coaches will tell you play simple, get the puck deep, play smart. And, you know, that's what they did. And and the thing that the flyers are also doing is you, you can tell they're a tight group already. And I know we're only 10 games in, but they're all sticking up for each other. And I don't mean just fighting. I'm just, they're always there and they're just working. They're working mm-hmm. hard and, you know, the record kind of shows it. I mean, yep. they're just, they're just, they're playing good hockey. The scoring's pretty spread out too. Like you, you brought up Rassar, that that was a great goal. That guy's got a lot of skill. Yep. Um, you know, and and he's playing with a couple of good players too. So um, I, I like how their scoring is going as well. But basically, to answer your question, I think it's just that road mentality that you try to start a game off with, and you want to frustrate the other team. And it's just like I said, a, a really good road win, man. Yeah, no, no, I think that's well said. Um, and it always reminds me of like the New Jersey Devils. Like, I feel like they always played a road game, like no matter, oh, especially like God. the Martin Burdur team. Like, yeah, they, they always played a road game home or away. Uh, they weren't making mistakes. They capitalized on all of yours. Um, and I feel like that that is usually the essence of a good team. And I like what you were saying about the camaraderie. It's absolutely noticeable. I mean, this team doesn't even have Kevin Hayes. Ryan Ellis has only been there for half of the time so far. And you just notice there's like zero complaining there. Even the, like, I, you know, like going from the Pittsburgh game, a game where they could hang their head on that, that game or even be down and be upset that they're down in a game that they're supposed to win. Again, I completely agree with you. There are no easy games anymore. And I do want to talk about the Coyotes a little bit. Um, you know, there are no easy wins and they came out. They didn't just come out and play like the way they did against the Pens. They played better so it means that they kind of got together because you can say you know the coaches tell you what to do but it was clearly a decision they made as a group they obviously believe in one another and to miss your number two center and you know your number two defender or call him the best defender you you know whatever you want i call him the number one vet um you know to miss those key pieces and even a guy like wade allison who was supposed to be i think a lot of the guys probably expect him to be with the team uh, you know, to miss those guys and to not miss a beat, to come in, to stick to the game plan and essentially do what the Penguins did to us, which is, you know what I mean? Like they just yeah. come out and play their game um, and they build that on the road. Do you, do you think that um, the Flyers will build on that as the season goes on? Because I think when you get guys like Hayes and Ellis back in, I don't think the, the foot goes off the pedal at all. I think that that actually kind of benefits everybody because they're like, hey, we can do this without them. Right. So now that they're here, like that should be like, we should, we should take this up a notch. Right. I, I agree with you. And, and it's funny. I, you know, I think I don't, no one's forgotten about Hazy or Ellis, right. but you're right. That's a great point. Like they're not even in the lineup. You yeah. know, I think Ellie's once he played three games, he's only played three, three games. Four. Yeah. Maybe three or four. four. Um, and Hazy obviously hasn't played yet. I know he's getting close. I uh, spoke on him the other day, but um, I, I, I just, I love what I'm seeing when I'm watching and I'm fortunate enough. I'm, I'm buddies with a lot of the guys and I do get to talk to them and they love one another. And like you said, you know, the coaches come in and talk, you're always listening to what the coach has to say, but when they leave that room, they're only in there a minute and a half, you know, in between periods mm-hmm. and the boys are talking and they know, and you've got a group of, of uh, leaders now. I mean, 
obviously Claude's older. Coots is older. He's, he's a captain. Provy. Now you got to remember Provy's in his what sixth year now. Can, yeah. can, I can't even believe that. Um, but you got a lot of good vets in there and the kids are all looking up to them and they're teaching them the right way. But so far I've just been, it's been great to watch, you know, like I love the way they're playing. They're playing hard. Uh, to me, there could have been more than one bad period. I thought the, the biggest, the, it was the first game against Vancouver. I just thought they kind of went to sleep a little bit in one of the periods. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was the second period, but, period. but I mean, you know, no one wants to hear, and it's your first game of the year. You, you, you sh shouldn't happen, but it's a long season. It does happen. It happens to everyone, but I just love the way they're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, it's been a very entertaining season so far, uh, especially when you compare it to last season and there seems to be like, again, I, I see the gap at number two center, even though I think Broussard's done a very admirable job and Lawton definitely as well, stepping in at three C, um, you know, there's just a lot to build on. Like people, nit like I noticed people nitpick on Sandheim one night and Ristolainen in another night. And it's like, right. But you're not looking at it as a whole. Like you have to look at it as a whole. You can sit there and let uh, perfect be the enemy of good where, you know, they see a guy make a mistake and go, oh, he's not good because he made him. It's like that stuff is almost irrelevant. They all make mistakes. It's how they recover and how they, you know, they, they get back on, kind of get back on the horse, right? That, that yeah. That's the mind of a champion. Um, you mentioned the leadership group, but I want to talk about Drew specifically, and I want to talk about the top line. Um, they've been good every night. Uh, Katuria had one, I would say, off night the other night against the Pens. Not that he played poorly. He just wasn't on the same game normally. It's like His passes were slightly off, and everybody kind of noticed it. But then Travis Konechny had a great game that game. And it just seems like that top line, Drew, in my opinion, has been great. Every night, uh, he, there's a reason he has a point. I think almost every game outside of one, um, and you know him and Katuria are on pace for a hundred point season. I don't know if that'll continue, but they're definitely on the pace for something you know ninety point hundred point season. And um, you know it just it almost seems like a few years ago when the top line was rolling again. Uh, what do you think about that top line? What do you think about the way they're playing? And you know, obviously the motivation that Drew is carrying. Uh, which I think is immense, and I love to see it because I, I hate the Drews over the hill. I despise that conversation. I was like, you let him determine that. Right. I have yet to see that. Yeah, this guy's in tremendous shape, and uh, but Claude's he's just started this season off the way I thought he would. To be honest with you, I mean, I, I've always. I used to really get wound up when I was with the team and even buddies would say, oh, he's, we got to get rid of him. I'm like, you out of your mind. You did like, it, it there'll be crazy. people that there'll be people to listen to this and they, they still say it. I mean, even with, you know, like you said, he's got a point again, he's got 12, 12 points in 10 games. Um, but it's the way he's playing and how smart he is. And the people don't, haven't been as, and I understand, like, I'm lucky. I've, I was behind it. I, I know what was going on back there. I know how much this guy loves hockey, loves Philadelphia, loves the team. Um, he hates to lose. Like, he hates to lose. And he's just come out, and he's not taking no for an answer. I mean, he's just, and you can see it in his play, like you said. And that, yep. uh, I, I've always loved G. I, I just think he's such a special hockey player. I mean, you see the numbers actually he's getting a little bit of recognition right now. Like mm -hmm. I've been seeing on the network and on TNT and that they were like, threw up some numbers. The guys he's with is like Crosby Ovechkin. Like what, like what more can the guy, you know, like I, I don't know what, what everyone expects. We expect to win a cup. We obviously, but it's not one guy's going to win you that cup. Sure. But, um, I just love the way he's playing. I love the way he's so, so fired up. When have you seen G celebrate goals like he has this year? You could just see it's burning. I actually sent him a text because when he scored the one goal, I mean, it was a huge Sally. I said pretty heavy on the Sally there. Right? And he goes, dude, the place was electric. I was just so fired up. And that's what I wish he would say in the media to let people know, you know, that that's mm -hmm. how he feels like he he's, he's, literally in my, in the text said the place was electric. I was just jacked, you know? Um, but I love the way he's playing that line. I think that's a great line. And just wait till TK like catches fire. Cause this kid can, he can shoot a hockey puck and he's just a, he's an aggravating little 
SOB, you know, out there, but, but he backs it up and, and um, he can skate and can shoot and Coots is an intelligent player. Obviously. I mean, every year he's running for the Selkie. Um, I, I, I love that line. And I, and I just think G's going to, this is going to keep going. Like, I don't want to jinx any of them, but G's determined. Yeah. He's determined. Yeah. No, I honestly, I, people call me optimistic and, you know, I'm pretty positive, dude. I, I can honestly see it increasing actually from the pace that it's on because the team has so many new bodies and they're finally starting to play more like a team. Like not that they played poorly in these games, but they have some lapses and periods still. And I think that that's the stuff that you kind of work out throughout the season. And when a team plays well, the best players statistically excel. And I think that's kind of what we're watching. You know, we watched that second line kind of take over in the beginning of the season, even though the top line was still producing. And then it opened up kind of the doors for everybody else to produce. And speaking of the second line, you know, Broussard, Cam Atkinson, newcomer, who obviously has been, you know, I love Jake Voracek. I know people like to knock on people after they leave town. I'm still a big Jake Voracek fan. Um, But he, you know, Cam Atkinson has definitely been an awesome addition. He's been just as advertised. He's the shooting mentality that, quite frankly, a lot of us wanted to see. And right. then you have a guy like Joel Farabee, who I am extremely high on. I still think he has potential to be a superstar, not just a not just a really good player in the league. I think what he's doing is very rare. I think people aren't really realizing how rare it is. And he's slowed down a little bit, but so is the second line. I do expect it to pick back up. And I even can see the lines changing a little bit, especially when Hayes comes back in. Um, but what do you think about that second line? What do you think about, you know, having those two shooters on the side of Derek Broussard? What do you think that really creates for the team? I, I think uh, what you just said there, like, I don't know if everyone in Philadelphia realizes how good Joel Faraby I don't is going to is gonna be. Um, he's a special player and he, he's got he's got like a little bit of everything. Like he's very skilled, but mm-hmm. he's he's got kind of an old school mentality, which the first totally. day first day I met him. And then as like, uh, when I was still with the team and he was with us, I'm like, he's, a, he's an old school, like he's just an old school kid, you know, and he's a young kid, but, um, I love the second line. And like you said, I think it's, I think you're going to have to push brass down. Maybe not at first, but when Hazy's got to get his legs under him in game yep. time. Um, but I think if it, I'm not the coach there, but I'm, I'm guessing, you know, you, you kind of have to have Hazy there in that second spot. Um, but it's not going to hurt the team. It's just going to make the third line better if Brass is, is there. You know, you can always, always move lots to to a wing, whatever you, whatever they decide to do. But I really like that second line. Like you said, Atkinson's got six goals. He, you know, he's a shooter. He's going to shoot. That, you don't. You shouldn't hear shoot in the stands right. when when Cam's on the on the ice. But um, Broussard's he's a skilled guy too. That um, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm not shocked. Uh, of the way he's played because he's a good hockey player, but um, I, I was happy. Uh, he's got, I think, seven points. He's got two goals and five assists, I believe, yep. in the first ten games. And I mean, that's not bad at all, especially if you nope. can keep that up the whole the whole season. And and another thing, back to your point about that first line is they're they're putting points up, and you got to realize they're going against the best defense every night, mm-hmm. which helps that second line. And when Hazy comes back, let's hope. You know, he comes back feeling good, and, and I think it's only going to help the team, like you said. So um, I, I, we were kidding, Riley uh, and I were kind of kidding. We're like, they, right now, like, like the second line was playing so well, like they may start getting that top uh, defensive pairing or forwards. I'm like, watch out because <laughs> then G and those guys gonna are going to really – You um, can't afford to do that against this team. No, you can't, and that's the good thing right now about the team. I mean – you got to give Chuck a lot of credit because they've got some serious depth going right now. Like you said, Wade Allison's hurt. He's not even there. I know. Um, even, uh, you know, even I, I thought Margaret Frost would make the team this year, you know, yep. and he, he's down right now. Um, he's heating up. He's heating yeah, up for the fans. Yeah. yeah, he is. And, uh, I mean, I love their depth. I even, you know, it sucks. Alice is out. Um, I'd rather him be healthy later on. If he's hurt, like, like, don't play hurt. Like, I think in Nash, he played hurt a lot. He's just one of those guys. Mm-hmm. He reminds me a little bit of Chemo team. And, like, when we, totally. first got, when we first got Chemo, I remember the guys from Nashville were like, this guy's a warrior. Like, he'll go back. It could be the biggest guy in the league coming back to hit him, and he'll make the play. To, he'll take a hit to make the play. And and after a while, you're like, Chemo, just poke it, move, man. We, we need you, bro. And it's kind of like Ellis. He, he's the same way. Like, he'll go back there. He'll just get run through the wall. 
And I think that's why he, he's been hurt a little bit in his career. Like, you know, like he was in Nashville and now he's hurt. Now I don't even know what's wrong with him now, but uh, I haven't asked, but um, you get him back at this team. I really like their depth. They're like I, I, I like C- uh, Sealer. I like the way he. Uh, I like his energy. Like yeah. he, he's. I think he's he's fit in there well. Just for you know, he's filling in. But uh, this team, I love their depth. And and to your question, I really like that second line. I think they played really well. Yeah, I, th- I think sealer has got a little bit of that old school mentality in him too. Yeah. Especially you know, you saw the way he fought. He like he's a guy who just knows his role. Um, and that is really important. It, you can tell, like he's if he plays ten minutes a night, he's you'll never hear a complaint. Nope. He's gonna play every shift as hard as he can. Um, and that's that's really the type of guy you need at that number seven, number eight spot. A guy who's experienced can step in. You know, he doesn't contribute too much offensively, but that doesn't matter because the role you play him in is the type of role where, quite frankly, it's kind of like Nate Thompson. Like you're gonna take a beating. Like it's kind of like you're there for the physicality, you're there to block shots, you're there to be in the right place at the right time. You're you're there to to take that hit, to make that play, to get that puck out, the stuff that a lot of fans kind of look past because it just happens in a moment. Right. But it's like that's the play that kind of separated, you know, a, a clean exit from, you know, a, a chance of a break the other way that, you know, right. the team collapses and gives up a goal. Um it's it's also ahead, I'm sorry, it's it's uh-huh. also what you just said. It's also what people don't understand is that's what lifts the team. You want to, you want to see a bench whacking their sticks, patting a guy like, let's go. You know, those things are huge on a hockey team. And, and like you said, sealer, he knows his role. He knows what he's there to do. Uh, Tomer's been in the league for a long time, man. Yep. This guy's a, such a team guy. And I thought, you know, I, I thought it was a mistake not signing him for last year. Yep. But we got him back. They recognized it. Yeah, they recognize it. I mean, he's just a, not that they had bad guys on the team. It's not that. It's just Tomer's a veteran. He knows what he's supposed to do. And he's not going to bitch if he doesn't play a lot in a third period when it's a 2 2 game and you, or, or 3 2 game and you need goals. Now he's probably going to be out there in the last two minutes because he's so, he's, he's so responsible. Yep. But he's not going to, he knows he's not going to play on the power play. You know, like he knows things like that. And those guys, when, when you have a team and, and, and players that, understand that and it doesn't bother them or they don't pout. I mean, I've seen it in the NHL. I mean, guys pouting and you're just like, man, like it's about the team, you know? Yeah. But uh, I I love that about these guys. And like we've been saying, just, you could just see it. You could just see how, how tight they are already. And I love it. Yeah. And uh, to to your point, I mean, I was saying it kind of in the off season, I was like, Flyers have to get a veteran fourth line center. No more couldn't put in Connor Bunham in, out there. It's just not a role that you want to put a young guy in. I mean, maybe there's a, a handful. Scott Lawton could have probably pulled it off as a younger guy, but he's not really a fourth line center. You put him fourth line center, he's probably the best in the league at it. Yeah. Um, you really you need a guy who can take punishment, a guy who can will play every shift the same, who can win face-offs, who can block shots, just can keep their game simple. And I really don't think that younger guys can do that. I really just think it's a veteran type of role. It's not a glorified role at all. Um, and mentally, I think it's challenging. Um, I think it's really challenging mentally to play that type of role as a young guy. Maybe you have the talent, but I don't necessarily think it's just about talent. I do want to circle back real quick. Something about, you know, about Joel Farabee, because I gush about him quite a bit. And you said something, he has an old school mentality. And I've been around him a very small amount. And I definitely noticed that. And, uh, you know, obviously Giroux won't be here forever. Um, and we can talk about the contract stuff because I do think he's getting re-signed. Um, but, you know, eventually, you know, maybe it's going to be Sean Couturier takes the mantle of being captain. But I do see a future captain in Joel Farabee. Just the way he carries himself. You know, I, I talk about this moment with other people. I just remember being in the press box. And, and Gurman Rupsov was joining the team, and it was the first time he was coming to the team. Um, and he didn't really know English well, and I'm sure his English has improved now. But I just remember Joel Farabee being the younger guy, pretty much like looked like he took him under his wing. And it's like he like knew to do this instinctively. Right. And I, I feel like he has leadership instincts that cannot be taught. Um, do you see that in Farabee? Yes, 100%. Um, you hit the nail on the head there. It, it's, uh, it's just in him. You can see it. He's, mm-hmm. 
he's, you know, he came in as a rookie and he, and I'm trying to think of the right way to say it. He's not a cocky guy. He's confident, but what I mean is like, he's not like one of those kids just sit there. He's got swagger. And, you know, he, you know, he talked in the room and, and sometimes, you know, not at the wrong time. Like sometimes mm-hmm. they pick on rookies and be like, Hey, don't speak. And like, you know, just, but they're totally sure. kidding around. It's not as bad as it used to be back in the day, but uh, Beezer's like, uh, I mean, he has that in him. He's a, he's a, he's definitely a leader already. Um, I know you have a ton of leaders. He's probably not, I don't think he's in a leadership group yet, but you might as well consider him in there because of the way he plays and the way he prepares, he does everything like a pro and he's just two, what, two to three years in. Crazy. Um, he, he's, he's a, I really, he's a special person and he's a special hockey player and it was, it's, he's, he's going to be, like you said, I, I couldn't agree anymore. He's going to be a star in this league. I really believe that. Yeah. I think for sure he'll wear an A. We'll see if he ever gets a C. Yeah. Um, but he just seems like the guy, you know, I, if I'm rebuilding a team and he's part of my young group of players, like if I'm like the Ottawa Senators, you know, he's the type of guy I'm like, I'm either considering for a captaincy or assistant captain. Like right. immediately, I was like, I want the tone of my team to build off the way this guy carries himself. Yeah. Um, real quick, what, what do you think about the Giroux situation? Do you, again, if you have any inside word, definitely don't tell me because I don't I, think this is the way to do it. I, no, I don't. I, okay. have, I have zero inside. Okay, good. I, I think, I, I don't know how you can't resign this guy. That's, <laughs> what, that's my thought. I mean, I, I really, I don't. Um, if he was, you know, let's, like I said, I don't want to jinx anything. He doesn't believe in that shit anyway. So, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna get 90 points plus this year. I, I believe I, as long as he stays healthy, knock that's wood. What I think. And, and, uh, how do you not sign him? He's going to be look, look, look where he is amongst like all the hall of fame players from the flyers. I mean, yep. he's, he's right there. And, and, uh, and finish I, number two. I, yeah, and I still just don't. I just sometimes I just don't get why he. I just don't. I don't think. I don't think the league gives him enough credit. I don't I com- think. I completely agree. I, I'm not even talking about Philadelphia. Like I'm around the league. I just don't understand that he doesn't get more. We're not in Florida, you know. Barkov's a guy where I think he's just not even looked at. This guy's a stud. Yeah, not to, not to get off on another team, no, no, but fine. but gee, it. but gee, I feel like even in the league, you know, I, I don't think he gets enough credit for what he's done until lately. Now this this hot start, um, you know, like I said, I've seen on the, I'm sure you've seen it too on, on the networks. They they are kind of talking about it, throwing those numbers up, and you're like, oh, he's with, oh, he's with Ovi and Sid because the Flyers like, are good. That's probably know, why too. Well, that's true, and uh, I just I think. How can you not sign the guy? I mean, he he keeps himself in tremendous shape. He works his ass off um, off season. I mean, the guy like you ever see him breathing hard? Like he plays as hard as anyone could play, and he's just he's in great shape. Yep. Yeah his his age is is up there for a hockey player, but you know he, you have to sign him. Yeah. Even if it's I, I don't know like I'm not a GM, but. Yeah, say you sign him one to two years and go from there because you hate to see a guy. I like. I hope we, we that the Flyers can win one in the next year or two. Whatever. I just hope G's here because I totally agree. Um, he's done so much for this franchise, and I like. I said I've beaten a dead horse here, but I don't think he's got near the recognition he should get. I t- I totally agree. That's my like- opinion. I, the way people talk about him, you wouldn't even recognize that he's a legendary. Uh, like, I think he's <laughs> literally a legend. And I think he's that will happen. Like, he's definitely he could get his number retired by the Flyers. Like, why wouldn't he? How he's, couldn't he? Really, it, that, to be honest, he's going to be one of those guys. I've said it to people on this podcast before that people who talk negatively about him now will miss him when he's gone. Without a doubt, you're going to you're going to like literally remember him as this like kind of hockey god that was here in Philadelphia. Because he's he's very much a unique talent. Even you know, I've been to some of the practices, and you watch the drills. He finishes like all of the drills first. Like yeah. he's not, you yeah. know, he's he's not the guy who's like kind of lagging in the back. Like he no. he makes it a point to be in the best shape. Um, I, if he can I've, help it. Yeah, you're right, and I've said that to people. I'm like, you have to see him behind, you know, the doors. Like mm-hmm. he practice, he takes every practice serious. 
like he practices as hard as he plays. And that's huge because there are guys that are really good that can get by and he could probably get by kind of coasting through practice. Sure. He's that's he's that skilled, but he won't do that. And that's a lot of things that people don't see unless you do go to practices. And like you said, you notice, wow, he's, you know, he's working. He, he, he does that every day, you know, days off. You almost have to be that way now. And it's not just G I'm not trying to say G's the only guy that works hard. They all work hard, but like he really, he really works hard at keeping himself in shape and he wants to play as much as possible. Um, and I just, I can't say enough good things about the guy. Yeah. I, I really, I, I love that you brought that up that you don't understand why people react the way he does. I mean, that's something our site talks about consistently. It's like, we don't get it at all. And so I want to go a little bit off topic here, but just because he's no longer a flyer. And I, I mentioned, I wanted to talk about Arizona and I want to talk about Shane Gosses bear a little bit because, you know, he's over there in a very tough situation on a team that is clearly tanking, you know, as close to tanking as you can see. Yeah. Um, he's got one goal and eight assists. He's a minus two and a team that's not playing well at all. Uh, and he's got nine points in 12 games. This is a guy who led the Flyers defense in points last year. The Flyers had to move a second round pick and a seventh to move this guy. I'm still baffled by it. Like I get he has his, I, I get that his game is not perfect. Like I do. And I get that maybe his contract is bad, but I don't really see that. I don't think he makes anything excessive. I think he gives you what he produces on the ice, especially if you're saying that offensive numbers make money, which they do. Right. Um, so what do you think is the case here with Shane Gosses bear? I mean, like I said this, I was like, he's going to be moved and wherever he goes, he's going to put up 50 to 60 points. And people are yeah. going to be like, Oh my God, I wish we still had Shane Gosses bear. So we moved assets to get him. And right. I don't think it was a slight on him so much. Like I think Fletcher really wanted it to work. I think they were really just trying to move on from the situation and that's why they did it. But you know, what do you think about Ghost? I know you like him in general, but like, yeah. what do you what do you think about the whole situation? Are you even surprised that he has nine points in twelve games? I'm not. I I would never be surprised if this guy puts points up. I mean, if you just watch him play, I mean, he's a highly highly skilled guy. Um, he dealt with some injuries when he was here, and yep. you know, in hockey, no one's gonna say, "Well, my wrist is hurt, but I'm playing." You know, no sure. one's gonna do that. The G, uh, the year G had an off year with. 67 point, whatever it was, he didn't have a, a year that he would like to have. No one knew he had two ripped groins and a bad and a basically a broken wrist. Yeah. Um, but they're not going to say that. But anyway, I think Ghost battled some injury issues. Um, you know, sometimes things happen with coaches too. I'm not saying that's the case there. I'm not really sure. I wasn't mm -hmm. there last year. Um, but I'm never surprised if Ghost is going to put points up because he's just too skilled now on a team that's not playing well and it's just probably not a very good team. Mm -hmm. um, I would be a little surprised because, you know, you got to have people to put the puck in the net. Um, I would think he'd have more than one goal so far, but the guy can shoot a hockey puck like crazy, but he doesn't have a, there's not a whole lot going on there. You watch him play the other night. If, if it's not for their goalie, that game's yeah. <laughs> to 10 nothing. That's you what know? I said about it. And as well. I, I mean, people, you know, some people are like, Oh, we barely, finally score i'm like man that guy was standing on his head we yeah like it's hard those are trap games man they're hard totally. to play they're they, they, people don't understand that they actually are hard to play they're gonna give them it, their all too you're exactly they're trying they want to win you're like i can't lose at home to a team that hasn't won a game right. so you're maybe you know but they found a way to win i was i was really happy i was like happy for that win because i've been there and you lose that game Yes. And it sucks. I think we lost Arizona a few years ago before. They, I think they won their first game against us a few years ago when I was still with the team. I think but, it's a sign of a good team. Sorry to cut you off, but no, a team I, that can mentally do that. No, I agree. So uh, I'm not, I don't know all the, you're right. We did give up things to get rid of him. I feel like, could we not have maybe, you know, got something back, you know, but I don't know everything that was going on there either. So I'm not surprised it goes is putting points up. I hope for him that he can do that all, all year and keep that plus minus down because it's going to be hard with that team. Let's, let's, totally. let's be honest. I mean, uh, they're not a very good team. So I could see some, I, honestly, I could see a team. I don't know if it's gonna be like a team like Tampa. I'm just throwing out a name there, like a team that's has their shit together. Yeah. Picking up a guy like ghost, fitting him in under the cap, 
And then yes. all of a sudden he fits in like gold and everybody's like Shane Gosses bears back. And I'm like, he never really yeah. went anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it's I, that's a great point. I mean, that's that he, there's a piece there. Like if you, I'm not sure what he has left on his deal, but you're right. A couple of years at couple years. 5 million, I think. And that's not crazy for a guy that uh, for a D man, that's get getting points like he can get. Yeah, um, so if he, you know, say a team like, like you said, Tampa, say a team like St. Louis needs, you know, needs a guy on the power. Like, like, I mean, Edmonton, you him. Are you kidding me? Like this guy's skilled. He's highly, highly skilled, man. He's a, he, he's a dynamic. I've never, I don't think I've ever in my 26 years, I was in hockey. I'm trying to think if I could think of anyone that could keep a puck in his own, like ghost. Oh, Jumping some of the off, stuff he throwing did, it through his legs to his. I've mean, never seen anybody do anything like he, that. He was diving um, with his hand. Just so many, his hand eye. He's a. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone keep a puck in his own like him. Like just so many different ways, I should say. There's guys yeah. who keep obviously keep the puck in his own, but um, yeah, I'm happy for Ghost as far as I hope he keeps playing well. Um, but uh, I am not surprised to yeah. see the point production. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all either. It's like, I, I, it, it's funny how, it, you know, it's kind of like the Drew situation where I feel like a lot of times, like people, like you're like looking for the thing wrong, you know, yeah. where we, we tend to do that here. To totally. Absolutely. And, and honestly, I don't necessarily have a problem with it either. Like people can react to things the way they want to react, right? It's an entertainment. It's a sport. Like they're fans. They buy in, they spend money. Like exactly. I totally get it. Um, but don't, I, the thing I say to a lot of people, like, don't let other people ruin things for you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and let's talk about hard a little bit. Let's transition into him because he's a guy who, and we can talk about Jones as well, because I think he deserves a lot of credit and is a big reason why I hate statistics, um, because they're not contextual. And I think a lot of people, I, I, I'll argue with any single analytics person, expert in the league. I have zero problem arguing with this because I don't think it's even deniable. I work in technology and I've seen analytics be misused. I know oh, yeah. exactly what people do. And I go, I, I get what you're saying, but you're not going to tell me that all the scenario there is the same as this scenario. So these numbers, they're not useful anymore. They're now useful in this context. So you have to start measuring now and then adjust the, and then, then look at your metrics, right? Then look to see how he's doing in this situation. So Carter Hart, right, is a guy who I've always said this from the beginning. If he struggles, if anything happens, do not panic. He is way ahead of schedule. He's not even supposed to be here. There are most, most NHL goalies don't touch the ice till they're like 26 years old in the NHL. Like it just doesn't happen. You have right. to be an adult. But Carter Hart has looked very good, in my opinion. I think he even has another gear that he's going to get to um, this year, especially when the team plays better around him. What do you think about Cart uh, Carter Hart's like resurgence? And you know, we can also mention Jones as well as just being uh, maybe maybe the best backup in the league in the early season. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, as far as Carter goes, I've never like I've known the, I've known him since he was eighteen, and just the mentality. Uh, and this young kid and, and the maturity, it's amazing. And I, I, last year you call it an off year for him. He, he'll tell you, like, I, I've got to be better. He, okay. he, he said to me, he, he's too hard on himself a little bit, I think, but, uh, I don't, like you said, I don't doubt this kid at all. I don't care if he, the thing I love about Carter is if he could have a bad game, I mean, a bad game mm -hmm. and, by the time the game's over, he talked to the coaches, talked to media, he showers, he's ready for tomorrow. And I'm not comparing him to Martin Brodeur, but I met him a few times. I've been lucky enough to talk to him and, and, and hear stories and, and trainers talk about him. They're like, Marty could lose 9 nothing. And by the time he showered, he's like, oh, hey, want to go have a beer? And it's gone, you know, and I think, I think that's huge, especially for a goalie, especially in Philadelphia, huge. you know. Like you got to remember, this guy's a kid, and he's way ahead of. I mean, he's a real deal. I re I mean, that's that's what that's I would say I to see. people. That that's what I tell everyone. He's the real deal. Um, I love his compete. I love how much he cares. Um, and you know, start off here three, two, and two. I think he's just going to get better. I think he's got another gear he's going to get into. But 
Um, I thought even the last, uh, I think two games before he got hurt, he played really well. They had the mm-hmm. one where well, the game he got hurt, uh, Pittsburgh, he won in the shootout. Yep. And I think the game before that he had won and I thought he looked really sharp. He had a little bit of a break there, <clears throat> reset his mind. And, um, but I, I knew this summer for talking to him, you know, I talked to him quite a bit and he was, he was really focused and, and excited for this year. And, and it's, they're all excited too, because they've just got such a good group uh, yep. of guys together and they're having fun. And that's the biggest thing when you go to the rink, you want to have fun and um, they're doing that. But Carter, Carter to me looks good. I think he's going to get better as the season goes. And Jones, I mean, what more could you ask for your backup? You, you sign the guy, he comes in, he, he started off three and oh, that's, that's huge for a team. I mean, I love Brian Elliott here and I love Brian Elliott with he's Carter because they, they got along real well. Um, I thought, I thought Els would get probably one more year, but it's hard to argue right now yeah. uh, with that. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I just thought they would probably keep uh, Els one more year. He's really, he was really good with uh, Hartsey and Hartsey. They got along really well, which is huge. Believe it or not, there are teams where goalies are pulling against each other. I've seen it. And you're just like, dude, what, like, what's wrong? <laughs> what are you yeah. doing? Your teammates, but, um, Jones has stepped in here, looked really good, and I think Carter's just going to get better. I think he's looked great, and he's going to get better too. Yeah, I think it's the Kim Dillaball connection there that that brought Jones in here. Yeah, um, I I think he he, and, and this is what I was talking about statistics, and I want to talk about the new guys in general um, because it's just proof that these analytics, while they are valuable, this is not me saying that they're not valuable. They're they're being misused by the public, in my opinion, and some people who write about the team as well. And again, it doesn't mean they don't understand them. Some of them, I'm sure, understand analytics better than I do. But you are misusing them and you are relying on them. And if you spend your time looking at numbers, you're going to miss the game. And I, I see that stuff all the time. And again, it's not me saying that there's no value in it, but all the talk about Martin Jones, he's not good. He's not good. Look at his numbers in San Jose. Look at his numbers. And I'm like, okay, well, they were the same numbers every year for the same yeah. squad. And he was initially good there. Okay. So doesn't mean he has to come, doesn't mean he's going to come in here and take the spot from Hart, but we're asking him to play a certain role on this team. And I'm bringing up that word again. We're asking him to be a backup in a place where they had a bunch of goalies come in there for Jones and none of them took that net from him. He was still the starter there. Yep. And everybody expected him to be just a sieve in net, to just be a leaky sieve. And you do not see that. You see a guy who's, who's here to do a job and he's doing it well. And I think it's an example of like when guys come to your city to play hockey, you need to give them a clean slate. You cannot say, Oh, you're going to do exactly what you did over there because all the time that's proven wrong. And like, look at a guy like Sam Bennett in Florida, right? Who was a very high draft pick. And this is the path. I think Nolan Patrick is going to go on as well. Very high draft pick has a big frame, plays a big game, you know, take probably would take him a little bit longer to get in the NHL. And, you know, once his game started maturing, he got traded, got put in the right role, right situation. Boom. His numbers spike. Yeah. Um, I think we're seeing something similar to Jones. I mean, do you, do you see kind of what I'm talking about there? I know. I understand. Totally. It's, it's, uh, you, you can throw Risto line in that too. Risto. Like, I want to talk about guy, him. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah. Great yeah, game against the Caps. His yeah. I mean, let's face it. Like, well, let's talk about Jones where you asked me about Jones, but sure. uh, yeah, I, I agree. Like he was on a different team for one. He also, let's not forget, took a team to the finals. Yes. Uh, maybe people forget about that. Of course um, they do. I agree with you on the analytic part of it. Cause I saw a lot of that really come into play with when Ron Hextel was here, he, he likes uh, the analytics. I, I, I think the flyers have three analytic guys um, full time. Uh, mm-hmm. There um, now, I think Chuck Chuck likes that stuff too. Um, As they should, I, yeah. I mean, it's some. Like I there's said some, there's value. There's a, there's a lot of value, but like you said, you have to look at the at the certain situations. It's not just the whole. Here's the whole analytics. Oh, he's no good. That's right. That's not how it works. It, uh, right. But uh, Jonesy comes in here. This is a new team. Um, he wants to come in too, and and be as good as he can. I mean, he's yes. a pro and you've got a good team. He's playing for better than where he came from the last couple of years, you know, totally. Um, so 
I don't care about his numbers the last few years. I care about what he's going to do now. And right now he's three and oh, so what kind of analytics do they want to throw at that? You know, yeah. the people that are, are trying, that's to, what I'm saying. Uh, that, that's where analytics kind of misses the mark, right? Because how do you explain that? Right. Because the way you can only explain that is context matters. The system, because it's not just the city, right? It's a different city, different group of players, different goalie coach, different system, yeah. different coaches. It's like, how do you take all of those factors and then say, oh, the numbers will end up being the same? Right. It's like, it's literally impossible. It's the exact opposite way of using analytics. Yeah, you're exactly, you just named about six things that they're not taking into account. Right. You, you know, like, those are you know, factors. If it's a math equation, those are factors that are X's, right? So you don't have right. the answer. Right. That's how exactly. I see it. Um, no, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, let's talk about Risto. I love that you brought that up. Uh, this is a guy who obviously was not an analytics darling. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't bother me at all, quite frankly. Again, in my mind, I saw a role here for him. I didn't look at his analytics. I was like, we need a big guy who moves people in front of the net, who plays mean, who can skate. He has a two-way game in him as well. Um, and I think him and Sandheim had their best game together, and I think they're finally starting to develop a lot of that chemistry, which is obviously going to take time. Um, what do you think about Ristolainen? What do you think about his performance so far? What do you think about him with Sandheim? Are you surprised that he's doing well? Um, I know he only has one assist, but again, he's playing a very different role here for the Flyers than he was in Buffalo. Um, I love his game. I love his intensity. I love the physical factor of the game. I think you will see more points than people realize from mm -hmm. him um, by the end of the year. Uh, but he has a different role here, like you said. Um, it's funny. Craig Berube told me. I didn't know. I mean, obviously, I've seen Ristolainen play. I watched him play a number of times, obviously, when we were playing against Buffalo. Um, I know he was a very hard guy to play against guys did not like playing against him. He made it a, mm -hmm. a tough game for you. Um, but Craig Berube said to me that he felt like that was one of the best moves that the Flyers made bringing this guy. He goes, I don't give a shit really about the, he said, I don't care about what you're This guy can play. It's what he, it's exactly what chief said to me. And so I was stealing chief's thunder with guys who are asking me, I'm like, wow, this guy can play. Yeah. I said, but I obviously said chief told me that like uh, Craig Berube, that was his opinion. It doesn't mean it's right. Stanley Cup winning uh, coach. He, yeah, he really, he really liked him. And he was like, trust me, this is going to be a huge pickup for them. So, and so far, I've, I mean, you can't really complain with what you see from him. He looks, he fits right in. And uh, I don't know if you saw a video. There's a video that the, the, the Philadelphia Warriors, the Flyers Warriors team won all three tiers. All three teams won a uh, National Warriors Cup this past mm -hmm. weekend. And there were a bunch of the guys out watching them. And Risto's banging on the glass. I'm like, dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Like, and there were there were a few of the guys doing it, but uh, he just looks like he's very happy here. I mean, let's face it, like, not to crap on Buffalo, but where would you rather be? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, that's a tough, especially at to that play. time. He, exactly, and um, he was probably like so happy when he got the news that he was coming here. But uh, and he I, fits I, the mold here, and uh, I know the Flyers really wanted to take him in the draft. Uh, and then he was picked up and then they ended up going more and obviously has had injury history, but yeah. I, I think he was always kind of meant to be a flyer in kind of weird way. I, I think you're right. He, he fits right in here. Uh, I don't think the fans are going to have anything to complain about really with him. I think they like the way he plays um, and he's a total team guy. Uh, I, I really, I really like watching him play. And, and, and I've, from what I remember, him playing against us i just remember how hard he was to play against no matter if we were beating him five to one he was he did not stop playing i love that and he's a, he's a guy that i think people will appreciate even more come playoff time exactly physicality ramps up considerably 100%. and i think a guy like sandheim who's who's a big kid but he's not the most physical i think that could change throughout his career um but he's not the most physical and i think that's something that that second pairing lack last year, I think it complements him really well. I think it allows Santa to be a little bit more offensive, probably give him a little more swagger too, to know that yep. Ristolainen's got his back. Yes. Um, so let me ask you something. I, I'm just going to group this into the, as a bucket. So we got a, a bunch of new names, right? We talked about a few of them so far. Um, I've singled out Zach McEwen a few times because I, I was shocked that we were able to get this guy. This is the type of guy that I really wanted on the fourth line. Yes. Um, what do you think about McEwen? Um, you know, his, his kind of arrival to Philadelphia, I think he has been better than advertised. Um, 
and you know anybody else that you want to kind of talk about. I mean, Yandel obviously has been great in his role as well. Yeah, I, McEwen. I was going to say that to you, even if you didn't bring it up. I was yeah. going to mention him because he really surprised me. Like this, he. I, he I actually, skate. I thought he can. He can skate, and he's a he's a smart player. He knows. He, he makes the right plays, easy plays, you know, doesn't try to do anything out of his comfort zone, but you can tell he's banging bodies all of a sudden. Oh, you got a chance. You know, he got a, a shot on goal like a, and he's tough. So I don't think anyone's going to take any liberties out there, um, which still is, is needed in hockey. I don't care what anybody says. hundred percent. You, you need that guy. And he did. I have to admit, I, I actually just met him. I'd never met him before. I met him, uh, uh, I guess two weeks ago now and had a beer with him and and we were talking and and I I even said, I said, man, I I like your game. Like I didn't want to say, Oh, you can actually play. I know the guy can play. So, you know, anyone that's even close to the NHL can play, but he did surprise me um, with, with his game. Um, He could skate. I think the first time I saw him play was I was actually at the game. Me and Riley were there and I, I, me and Riley kept going like, I love his game. Like he's, he's, he's plays the right way. He plays hard. Um, he's like a perfect fourth line winger. He, he really that's the way is. I see it. And it's another guy that's not going to bitch and complain. He knows his role. He's going to step up when he has to step up. He's proved it. Um, great fight with Luke. Uh, Shen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both of them just old throw school. it. Just that was an old school fight. I yeah. was actually worried that uh, Big Mac was going to cut his hand all up grabbing the visor. Like, I don't think he meant to grab the visor. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, I love his game. I love his his energy. Just when I met him, like he's just one of those guys. He's you know, your your tougher guys are always the most fun guys, it seems like. Uh, and uh, he's I, I love his energy. I love the way he plays. I mean, hard to take that guy out of the lineup, if you ask me. Yeah, actually, I was like thinking in my head already. And I brought this up on the podcast before, but, you know, fully healthy. Um you know, and I guess I can include Allison in that. So it'd be either Allison or Thompson. But I was like, you have a fourth line of Scott Lawton, Zach McEwen, and either Allison or Nate Thompson. I was like, good luck. Yeah. Like, good mean, luck matching up against this team. It's um, the truth. Because they're going to score on you. I love I love the depth on this team. I really, yep. I really do. I, I have a saying that, you know, probably is a little bit cheesy, but I still stand by it. I The one thing that I say when everybody wants to go out and get all these like superstar players, I'm like, but depth wins championships. You know, it's very, it's very rare that it's like Connor McDavid winning a championship. It's the depth on the team that does it. Um, It's it's, go go ahead. You've seen it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you you didn't. You've seen it. Um, You have to have that depth because when the playoffs come around, it's a different animal. Yes, Connor McDavid is probably the best player in the world at this point. Incredible. Dry sidles right there too. I mean, it's another Crosby Malkin. You, you've situation. got, you've got, you've got guys that, like it's going to be so hard for them to win with if they don't have a four lines. Yep. Because um, I mean, it's not like ooh, I just figured something out. But it's hard when you don't have that depth because yeah. it's going to be it's the the playoffs a different animal. I mean, we know we've seen players go through, you know, that's some things that people have got on Claude about. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He had 82 points. He had a point a game, but where was he in the playoffs? Well, you think he wasn't trying? It's not that it's not that it's not that easy for anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, But you're right. That that depth is what that's what you need. That's what you win with. And and, um, I think it's huge. I don't want to, you know, we're 10 games in. I'm not. Me and Riley joke around all the time. Like every time we get excited, they would drop two or three. We're like, oh yeah. shit. But I, I love this team, man. And I love their depth. And I I couldn't agree with you more. That's how you win. Yeah. And I, I think, and credit to Chuck Fletcher, I think he really did a great job evaluating where the team was and what the aspects that needed to change. And I think veteran depth was very noticeable under COVID, right? It kind of like exposed our lack of stability. And then the physical, the physicality of the game, right? Like the ability to, to face a tougher opponent like the Islanders, right? Or even the Bruins last year. And when teams would kind of wear on the Flyers physically, like you, all of our weaknesses would get exposed. And I, I think he really addressed that. Like the, the guys that we named, like Ristolainen, McEwen, you know, Thompson, and I'm sure I'm forgetting people. And obviously Braun's like this as well. I, Provorov is a tough guy. It's just like it's a lineup full of guys who will take the body 
who will play physical, will not shy out in a physical game. And when you get to the playoffs, I feel like the Flyers, if things continue to go the way they're going, no matter where they're ranked, I think they're capable of beating any team in the National Hockey League with the right makeup that they have right now. And again, health is a big thing and it goes for everybody. But, um, you know, I do think this is the first time legitimately in a while where you can look at, you know, kind of your checklist and be like, okay, you know, they got the goal scorer in Atkinson, they got a back and for him in, um, in Farabee, and then they still have Giroux and Couturier. And then you look at the D and you're like, every D pairing has veteran leadership and size and skill and experience. And the goaltenders, both of them are playing well and they're both talented. And, you know, you can say what you want about Jones, but like you said, he's been a very good goaltender in the past. So it's like not shocking he's doing well. You know, I don't want to, I, I hate building this up because like, you're right. It's like, every time we get excited, there's like something that shows up to knock us down, but it does seem like the recipe is there for a successful franchise. I don't know if they're going to win a cup, but maybe go on a, at least a run here to get people, you know, remembering that this team is extremely relevant, like the way right. they were when Ed Snyder was here. Exactly. And, and I really do think that they have a legitimate shot with this team. Um, and you never, like you said, you, you have to, it's a lot of luck as well. And I remember the year we, we ended up going to the finals that year. Like we snuck in. I still don't know how we were not in the playoffs with the team we had, but You're ridiculously we, talented. We, yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, Claude Drew your third line center. I know yeah, he was ridiculous. a kid, but he still put up a lot of points that season. But, yeah. Um, you know, we caught a break with Montreal upsetting, uh, I think Pitt, I think they yep. beat Pitt. Like, not that we couldn't have beat Pitt. We could have, but it's still, you know, it, it just, there's so many lucky, you, you have to have luck. You have to try to stay away from injury, which is hard. Mm -hmm. um, has to do a little bit with luck, really. I mean, you know, but I, I just like this team and I, I think people should be pumped up and I think they should expect great things because these guys expect that out of themselves. So I love I, that. And that's noticeable too, you know, not, right. not to cut you off, but you can tell that they have pretty high expectations for this season as well. Yeah. They yeah. Do. So uh, let's, let's get into the final two topics here and we'll, we'll make this relatively short, but uh, Maple Leafs coming up next. Maple Leafs just got their butts kicked five, one the other yeah. day, though they were on a tear and they are improving. So for all the doom and gloom that comes out of Toronto, that team yeah. is definitely, definitely <laughs> not out of it. Um, you know, you would think they're the worst team in the league, but by, by the way, know, they right? talk about them. Um, but they, you know, they're, they're a talented group. Uh, they're going to be a tough opponent. Like, like we said, there's not, there's no easy games here. And obviously dealing with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and John Tavares, uh, and Morgan Riley, that's, you know, it's going to be yeah. a handful. Um, I do, Personally, I would take the Flyers uh, lineup versus theirs, especially in the depth category. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that uh, that upcoming matchup? I I think the Flyers will be fine, but it does it. You know, it's funny. Like if I was like when I was there, you you see them, they started winning, right? So you're like, okay, you know, they they should win with the. <laughs> I mean, they have sure. a, but that's another team going back real quick that you need depth, and they're paying six guys are making over, you know, like how yep. much money I, I think it's going to be tough for that team, to be honest with you, to yep. win. And, and, uh, everybody's looking at them to win. Cause well, we got five superstars. Yeah. But like, what do you got after that? Like, I'm not saying they don't have good players. That's not what I mean. They do have a good team, but anyway, they, you know, they were on a little bit of a roll, like you said, and then they get thumped at home. So now they're going to come in here with an edge, yep. you know, but, but, so are the so are these guys. I think we're gonna win. Um, I can't wait to see Simmer. <laughs> uh, I still love him. I know he's, great. he's 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 the greatest. But um, that team is fun to watch. So they have a lot of skill. I mean, watching Matthews and Marner and, and Tavares and Riley, like you said. Uh, but I, I don't see any issues here. I mean, <laughs> it's funny. Like everybody's like, "Oh, what do you think tonight?" I'm like, "I think they're gonna win." I do. Wait, they're capable I, of winning every game. I I, I mean, you know, like that's just how I feel. Like, um, you know, obviously anything can happen, but um, you know, Mont uh, Montreal, uh, Toronto, like you said, they started picking it up a little bit there, and, and uh, they did get thumped at home. I was kind of shocked. I was watching a bit of that game, but uh, I, I think Flyboys will be good uh, tomorrow yeah. night. 
Yeah, it gets me really excited for to and hopefully this team, you know, knock on wood, gets healthy. You know, I I don't think, you know, like right now you can be like, okay, second line center is not there, but all of a sudden, like you drop Broussard, who's already been playing well. You put Hayes in number two, you bring Ryan Ellison in this lineup, and it's like yeah. they're already good. So yeah. it's like you know, healthy, I think they can be very dangerous. And I start getting cocky. I'm like, well, we can yeah, beat that team. We can beat that yeah. team. I mean, it's on it's paper. The, it makes sense. And that's, that's their mentality. You yeah. know, like we, we can beat every team and they, they know they can. Um, and like you said, like you still, you still have two of your top players out of the lineup. Yeah. And they're finding ways to win, which sometimes gets lost too. people are going to say, Oh, they, they barely won. Well, that happens. Day, though. That's it, so it, normal. It happens to every team. It happens to every team. Like they still know, won. They, they won. still won. And, and that's you know in in March when you're looking at the standings and we have a lot of points. You look back. You're like, oh yeah, I forgot they. Oh, should we take that two points away because they didn't play that great? But right. they found a way to win. Finding yeah. ways to win is what good teams do. Totally. When they're, agree. When they're not uh, playing their best, they find a way to win and. To me, that's huge. Yeah, I, I completely agree. There's no clean, easy road to the Stanley Cup from right. what I noticed. If there is, it's a rarity, and it's like what Tampa Bay managed to pull off. And again, how much money were they over the cap at that point? It's yeah, like, right. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like it's almost like they're I didn't I don't think they're cheating, but it, you know, at a certain right. point, it's like that's such a rare you know, thing to happen. Like you really have to kind of work and claw your way. And how many times were the Flyers when I don't want to say they were stuck in mediocrity, right? But they were kind of an average team that they would outplay teams, that they would get more shots on it. They would get endless chance and they still lose the game. Right. Well, typically, we were playing a better team and they would just yep. find a way to beat us. Their goaltender would stand up. They, they would shut us down at the end of the game, right? It's little things like that where it's like, even the Flyers coming back against the Pens, right? Yeah. The Flyers, in my opinion, are the better team in that scenario, especially because of the, you know, missing the players. The Flyers found a way to come back in that game, too. They didn't just lose in regulation. Right. Right. Like one bounce the other way in overtime and the Flyers win that game. And then everybody's saying a different tune. Yes. It's a whole different story. And uh, if you saw the the post game, that was kind of the guys were like, yeah, we want the two points, but we did fight back. We found a way. Sometimes people don't want to hear that. But, man, it's the truth. That point could be huge at the end of the year. And like you said, could have lost that game. Should have won it. Yes. Should have won it. You want to win out 82 games. Yeah. It, it's not going to happen. Um, but like Never you does. said, they, they, they found a way and, and they found a way to get a point, which is always big and always huge. At, at, especially at the end of the year. And you don't look back, you don't look back and say, well, I'll give that away. Give that point away because we didn't play that great. No, you want to take, take whatever you can get. Exactly. 100% agree. All right, let's end on this because I do want to get your quick opinion. I want to talk about the Jack Eichel situation. Um, that is, let's say it's finally resolved. Um, he moves in what I think is actually a pretty good return for the guy. I think anytime you trade a guy of that caliber, and that's for the trade Giroux people, you always yeah. lose. You always lose right. that trade. Um, maybe in the long term you win. It's possible, but odds are you're not getting another Jack Eichel. They right. did get uh, Peyton Krebs, who's a very yep. good prospect. They got Alex Tuck, who's obviously a playoff performer and a very good top six forward. You know, they got a couple, I think a couple first round picks it yep. was. Yeah. Uh, and then they, you know, they gave up a third. Right. Um, what do you think about that trade? What do you think that means for Vegas? And what do you think it means for Buffalo? Well, I think, first of all, like, you got to hope Jack's going to be able to, he's going to be able to play. He's going to have surgery. But. I mean, you're taking a pretty big chance. I mean, I know, listen, he's a he's a very special player. He's an all-star. Yep. He's a game changer. Uh, you just got to hope that whatever's going on. I, I didn't really, it's hard to understand that all of that going on in Buffalo, why they Agreed. wouldn't let the guy do what he thought was best for himself. Um, Seemed like a little bit of ego. Yeah. I, it, 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 the whole time this was going on, I just I had a hard time wrapping my head around a butt. The trade, I mean, like you said, they did get they did get some pretty good uh, Buffalo. I don't mind what they got back, obviously, and and then with the picks, you never know what the picks are going to end up being. So, sure. but still, they could, you know, end up being great. But I think for him, that team it blows my mind away 
how Vegas keeps coming up with ways to get players like this. How in the heck are they doing it with the salary cap? I just don't understand it. But I'll tell you what, if he comes back and he's healthy, look, I mean, they've got some firepower, man. Yeah. Like they got a legitimate top number one. They got a legit yeah. top number one defenseman. You know, they have all the veteran support around them. It's, it's, I mean, they're going to be in the mix again. And, they, you know, what's this, what, what year is this for them? Five? Fifth year? Yeah, Fifth that year? might be, tr- that might be true already. I mean, I think every it's fourth, year, fourth year, fourth year, every year they've been in the mix, right? I mean, like they've had a chance. Right? Yes. They've had a team. I, that has I actually a think this trade is for next year, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think this trade is very much is for next year. Like I think that they were like, hey, we're not, as great as we were last year. Right. What if we make this move from here on out? You know, we suffer a little bit in the short term. We're already missing Alex Tuck. You know, let's see. Can we grab Jack Eichel, make some other moves in the off season and then go for it again? I mean, right. Jack Eichel, like you said, is a special player is a game changer. Uh, I'm a huge yeah. fan. It sucks. that team USA won't have him this year. I know. Um, that's a, that's a big bummer. That's actually my end where I'm like, I want team yeah. USA to win. I, I know. Uh, Maybe no. they'll take Joel Farabee instead. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I, I hope th- I've I've uh I've sat down with uh Jack before and you know, talked to him a little bit. I'm not like great friends with him, but he's a he's a good kid. And I hope first of all he gets healthy. But yep. I mean he is a great player and it, it should work out well for Vegas. Like you said, it might be for a little bit more of the future, meaning next year, which mm-hmm. is a really good point. Um but if he gets back and he plays this year and he's healthy, you never know. And who knows? McCrimmon pulls things out of his hat all the time. Like, who knows what he's going to pull at the deadline? He might end up, you know, you just never know with them. They, they're they always doing something, which, you know, in Vegas, I feel like you you got to you, you have to at least be trying to do that. Right. Because yeah. you keep the people coming. But that's that's. That was my fave. That place is unbelievable to watch a game. If you haven't, yeah, I would to like there. to. Oh, yeah, God, it looks it's, amazing. It is actually. It's it's amazing. But uh, I guess I don't mind a trade because you, he wasn't going to play for Buffalo. No, so he was clearly done there. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that it happens that way, but it is. Um, it's. I think it's just more of an unfortunate situation. I, I personally, I'm typically I do. A lot of times, I, I don't want to say I side with management, but I empathize with management. Yeah. Like, I get where they're coming from a lot of times, these business decisions. This one, I'm kind of like, like you're going to trade him anyway. Yeah. Why are you letting him just sit there and suffer physically? Right. Yeah. Why not just let him get the surgery and because let him I'm, get... Exactly. I, I still don't understand it. Maybe there's something contractually that we're not aware of. True. Um, but I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. And uh, it's his body. I yeah. Think. And that's a great point. Like, you know, you're moving him. Let him do it. Just just let him go get do ahead it. Of it. I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm surprised they just didn't go do it. <laughs> like, they're not watching him. You know what I mean? They don't, he's not coming in the rank, right? Like, yeah. I, I, I'm just assuming one day he shows up healthy. <laughs> I, I'm assuming he didn't. But like, if you're just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting, it's from like, last year. Yeah, just God, he, he could have had play the off. That's what I'm saying. He could have had the could've... surgery in the off season. Could be playing for Team USA. Sorry yeah. to cut you off, but it no, frustrates. You're right. Me. It it is frustrating. It is frustrating because I I don't, I don't think it was handled the best. But you know, again, like you said, we're not there, like behind the door, yeah. so we don't know exactly everything. But to me, it's him. It's his body. He's your captain. He is the face of the Sabers let's close. Let's come in the room here, boys, and figure this out. Like, yeah. Come on, man. Like it's his, it's his neck. He wants to play hockey. It's not like he doesn't want to play. Right. He wants to do what he feels like is the best thing to do. I don't understand that. Yeah. I guess, uh, it's one for the books and yeah. credit to his, his new agent. I'm not sure his name, but, uh, you know, credit to his agent for getting that done. Yeah. Probably was not easy to step into. All right, Derek, this was awesome. Um, this was a great episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I definitely am going to want to have you back on anything you want to let people know that you're working on anything you can share. Now, I know you said you're working on some stuff that maybe you don't want to talk about, but any, anything you want to give the Flyers nitty gritty fans a shout out, uh, just, uh, check out nasty knuckles too, along with Flyers nitty gritty. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, me and Riley Cote and, uh, we actually, um, we are going to be doing a live show, uh, every Thursday. Oh. Um, coming up here at rivers casino 
Um, really? It's not, it's not the podcast. It's a, a yeah live show. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, and I guess that's about it, man. I'll have to come to one of those live shows. Yeah, like, literally come, right down the road here. Come on, man. I'm like come a mile over. away from it. Jump on with us. Talk a little hockey. I would love to do that, okay. dude. All right. Sure. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you again, man. This was oh, awesome. Thank you. Awesome episode. Thank you for scrambling last minute to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for listening. Please like, subscribe, share. It's a humongous help. Check out the team store, follow everybody. Um, and thank you just so much for listening and following along and supporting the, the group. It's been an awesome ride and affords me cool things like this. All right. Thank you everybody. And remember always stay pretty.